Thanks for joining me this week. Uh, the show this week is going to be Anarchy on the Waves. And it's basically about houseboating. Um, a lot of people in our culture don't really think about living on houseboats. Although in certain areas it's actually very popular. Um, South Florida down here where I am currently. Um, I know in California, like in Sausalito, they have just like an endless array of houseboats out there. Um, while it's new to our culture, or has you know had fleeting uh, popularity back and forth um, it's actually very popular in Asia there's uh, entire groups of people that live in houseboats around Hong Kong Island uh, all through the Kuala Lumpur area and uh, even in Thailand and uh, all through Southeast Asia it's very popular uh, for anarchists or anarcho-capitalists it's uh, particularly attractive because you know, if for some reason some local jurisdiction decided that they were going to try to create rules and regulations that, that don't currently exist, uh, because right now, I mean, you don't even have to pay property taxes if you live on a houseboat. You know, if you actually you know, pulled the houseboat up to a slip, well, then you'd be paying like a portion of that, kind of like you would be in rent by, uh, you know, by paying the fees for the slip. But if you're out on the open water and you're not anchored uh, in a harbor or anything, then you actually don't have to pay anybody anything to be out there. So it's going to actually be a way to live fairly free. The uh, houseboats have very little regulation. There's no building code. And you can basically build the houseboat you want to live on. Uh, the type of water that you're on would have some bearing on what kind of houseboat you can live in. The, the more ocean going it has to be and it needs to be built a little sturdier and a, built in a certain way to deal with the larger waves from the ocean but if you're on a small lake uh, you can really get by with uh, almost nothing more than uh, a barge and you can just build a house right on top of it and you can uh, use whatever building materials you want to you can build out of wood, you can use fiberglass uh, you can even use much more durable uh, materials like uh, steel and uh, even ferro cement. And a lot of people, you know, don't like to think of like ferro cement, but you got to think. While you build it in a certain way, the the boat could actually last for a very long time. There is a, a gentleman that actually pioneered uh, ferro cement boats, and he built uh, a rowboat back in 1850 and I guess after a period of time you know he got older may have passed away the boat was actually found at the bottom of the pond where he lived and it probably filled up with the water and it just sank to the bottom of the the pond they were able to pull it back out and it's in perfect shape so you know here's something that's uh, you know well over 150 years old and still going strong it's actually in a museum right now, in uh, I think in Paris. So ferro cement can actually be a very great technique in, uh, in doing a whole number of things. You know, boats, uh, because they really don't need to have that thick a wall, uh, because it's very strong if it's cured properly and everything. But uh, you can use it for fences, uh, normal homes now, sheds, you name it. So like I was starting to say before, uh, the great advantage of having the houseboat also is that you know if some local jurisdiction decides that they want to change the rules <clears throat> you can pull up stake and you can move down to another place where those rules won't apply to you <clears throat> and uh, especially like on the east coast uh, the intercoastal waterway basically goes all the way up and down the east coast <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me so you can actually go from <clears throat> all the way to uh, from Maine all the way down to Florida uh, you can actually go around the southern tip of Florida and then back up into the Gulf Coast <clears throat> all in uh, what's fairly peaceful waters so <clears throat> that's a huge advantage and especially if you uh, situate yourself so that you live or you you, uh, you moor your boat like near a state line like say you're uh, in Georgia and uh, the Georgia-North Carolina border or the Georgia-Florida border, 
you know, Georgia gets a little ornery, you move the other direction. And then next thing you know, you're, you're in another state. Rules don't apply. So, it allows you to uh, be selective. You know, that, uh, not exactly a permanent traveler type status, but uh, it's pretty close. And, you know, then again, you know, going up and down the, you know, if you're going through the Gulf, or depending on if it's a little ocean worthy, I mean, you can actually go from uh, Florida and you can uh, sort of scoot around Cuba uh, in either direction. And, you know, then you can uh, end up in uh, the Cayman Islands. You can go down to like Can Cancun, Mexico. I don't know, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And then down to Belize and keep on going right down through Central America. So, you know, having a houseboat uh, allows you to move and actually take your stuff with you. You can sleep in your own bed every night. So that's not bad. I've been uh, trying to talk the wife into that. Uh, we're, you know, we're still in a condo. So, uh, you know, the, the houseboat could easily be the size. So she's, uh, she's kind of getting used to the size. So we'll have to see what happens with the, uh, being able to get her on a houseboat. We actually are uh, thinking about uh, uh, doing like a like a four-hour cruise uh, and having the guy take us sort of out into the ocean so we can get a feel for what it's like to be out there. My, my wife, one of the first times I took her to the, uh, it wasn't even an ocean. Uh, it was uh, on Lake Ontario up in New York. And we stood on the beach and she looked out into the, the Great Lakes and saw nothing on the other side. You know, no land, there's no islands, no nothing. I mean, just, she just looked out and just saw the horizon with water. And, uh, you know, she she had a, a nice little panic attack on that one. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, that's always something you have to keep in mind, too. But then again, I mean, if you're on a small lake, you know, that's not going to be a big problem for you. So... Uh, the other advantage, or the other disadvantage of uh, having the boat is going to be that, uh, you know, where if you're in a physical location, you can easily hook up uh, internet, you know, like with broadband or like fiber uh, with a boat, unless you, I mean, you can run, you know, if you're in a slip or you're not too far out, you can always run, you know, wires, but, uh, you know, it's going to take extra care and you're going to be, you know, you're gonna to have to disconnect if you try to move the boat, and then you'll you'll lose that service. Or you could always go with the uh, 4G uh, cell connections. Uh, the not a lot of bandwidth uh, while you're on the boat, but you could always you know go to a McDonald's to to do a lot of the stuff where you'd have to access the internet. So I mean, there's ways to accommodate the lifestyle. And uh, I even uh, have heard that they're uh, they're getting ready to come out with a 5G standard, which will even be faster still. So uh, at a certain point, because cell connections are so popular, you know, as long as you're in within range of a cell tower with your houseboat, you should be able to get the internet connection you want. So that's going to be pretty useful uh, down the road. And you know, there are there are marine um, internet connections. I'm not sure how, how fast they are, what kind of bandwidth you get, but uh, I do know they're expensive. So, you know, that's always going to be something you're going to have to, you know, decide if it's worth it, you know, worth your time. And then as far as being able to, to be really mobile, there are, um, I, there's a seasteading organization there, seasteading.org. They are trying to actually set up uh, basically like colonies out in the ocean. And uh, one of the guys that, uh, that is interested in that, uh, he's down in uh, Anguilla. Uh, his name is Vince Kate. Uh, I know he uh, built like a, uh, got like a big ring that would float on the water. And he was checking to see, you know, if uh, it would help moderate the wave action in, inside of the circle. So that uh, basically you could have like a big harbor out on the ocean. Now, if something like that would work and was built, I mean, you could actually have a, a whole collection of houseboats out on the ocean. 
and they could uh, they can do very well out there. And on the open ocean, I mean, there's always uh, you, you can do fish farms. Uh, they could actually have large uh, barges with uh, with land on them. And uh, what do I call it? They can you can actually grow things out there. And uh, not to mention, there's always hydroponics. And uh, I saw a a book. Uh, I think I would actually probably own it. Um, called the Millennial Project, where he actually has basically large floating barges uh, out on the ocean, and he's using them to. Uh, I've seen with it, people have adapted them to use some solar power on them, wind power, and uh, another um, process called uh, OTEC. Uh, I forget what the acronym stands for. It's been a while since I've uh, I've read up on it. It's O T E C. And uh, basically, the the principle is that you know the ocean water, if you go down about a thousand feet or more, is uh, is actually pretty cold. And if you use that along with the water towards the top, then the temperature difference can actually help you generate power. And uh, I believe there's actually uh, a couple of plants like that that are actually in service right now in the world. So uh, it's very useful. Of course, you you know you have to have some place where you, know, you have access to both shallow and deep water at the same time. But uh, you know, if you're out in the middle of the ocean, you know, as long as your structure is large enough and you've got a tube long enough, then then you would have access. So, so this could very easily end up, uh, you know, using houseboats out in the ocean. It could very easily do a very uh, simple form of uh, of seasteading. You know, you get out past the jurisdiction of uh, any uh, local country. And uh, you guys are basically a law unto yourself, or you know, uh, definitely a an anarcho-capitalist society at that point because you'd have no uh, no rulers. Everybody would be responsible for their uh, their houseboat, and uh, the only other thing that you'd have to accommodate would be the rules of whatever uh, organization you were plugging your houseboat into. But as soon as you weren't happy, you could uh, you could always leave. So they change the rules and try to, uh, you know, do things that uh, you're not happy with. You can just vote with your feet, which is the, the best way and really the only effective way that there's ever been to vote. So um, I think I'm going to have to roll, wrap up the show. I, I think that's mostly you know, what I'd want to say right about now about this. Um, it's an, it's an area that I'm interested in, and I'll definitely be talking about it more later. I'm uh, actually uh, looking to do several projects along the way towards uh, doing a houseboat myself. I mean, I even like the idea of just putting together uh, uh, basically a barge, which would be a, like a floating raft with uh, 55 gallon drums under it, you know, the plastic ones. As long as they're protected from the sunlight, they would. Uh, actually not deteriorate so they can actually last a very long period of time and then on the platform like that you could uh, you could actually you know build a house and spend some time there at least in a sheltered area uh, the uh, the brother of uh, Ernest Hemingway tried to start his own colony out in the Caribbean somewhere uh, on, a, on a basically a platform like that. I, I don't know exactly what uh, building techniques he used for it and stuff, but it didn't last long. Um, I know there's a, a gentleman down in um, in Mexico, and he has uh, a spiral island, and I think now he calls it Joxy Island or something like that. His name is Richard Soa. He, uh, he's had trouble with uh, hurricanes in the past. Not that uh, his his floating bottle island actually broke apart, but it lost its uh, its anchorage, and you know once that happened, it, it got washed up onto shore, and you know that was the end of it. So you know, he's had to rebuild several times, but he uh, he's he's happy enough with his uh, his island that he he keeps rebuilding. So uh, there's got to be something there. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, any feedback that you want to give me, that'd be great. I'll uh, post uh, 
maybe my Facebook link here so you guys can get in touch with me and uh, if you have any questions anything I'd just get in touch with me uh, I appreciate you guys watching uh, if you're watching on my channel please remember to subscribe and like and if you're watching on the Voluntary Virtues Network uh, please remember to subscribe and like to that also and then come over and check out my channel oh and before I forget uh, I was able to find uh, about five minutes of video footage uh, on YouTube uh, in the Creative Commons and uh, I am going to post that right here as part of this video so uh, you know stay tuned and, and just keep watching and you'll see a tour of a uh, houseboat on Sh uh, Lake Shasta and then the other video is about a minute and that's uh, some houseboats out in uh, some place in Asia just so you can get a feel for it so that would be nice to actually be able to see what we're talking about and I'm not quite good enough and I'm not sure this software that I'm using right now will allow me to talk while I'm showing you the, uh, the video footage but uh, again uh, I just hope you guys have a good night and uh, please remember to like and subscribe thanks bye so this is our houseboat little table living room area stereo there's a TV in the cabinet who uses a TV in a houseboat microwave there's a blender in there that's refrigerator there's me that's a mirror air conditioner thermostat There's a bedroom in there. That's down here on the floor. Pantry. Um, broom closet. Two bathrooms. There's one doorknob and there's the other. This little bathroom. Little mirror. There I am again. Oh, and yes, I am in fact wearing shorts. There we go. That's me in shorts. A little stairway up here. Goes upstairs. Two, a couple little bedrooms. Let's get some light in here. There's a little bed back in there. That's where I sleep. fan window over there opens blinds and uh, opens to the air and there's another matching one here here's the Lucas Twins are staying two staterooms here another one right here and there's a walk to the back of the boat it's me Keith hi Keith yes you are shirtless yes I am he's uh he's my brother we're, we're blood brothers totally he just gets a little more sun than I do. Yep. Yeah. Front of the boat. Got a barbecue. Which ice chests. The ice chests we brought. They gave us one, but we left it. And there's the view from where we are right now on Lake Shasta. We're just hanging out here. Oh, right. Upstairs. The upper deck. How could I forget? We're doing a tour of this place. There's the flying... Uh, what do they call this? Flying bridge, yes. You can drive the ship from up here. I'm standing behind the wheel. This isn't bad. Kind of a nice way to drive the ship. A little wet bar thing or something. I don't know, it's a sink. A little storage cabinet. We've got boxes in there. Stereo. We're up here. And then you come around here and, oh, there's the hot tub. Yeah, that's a little disgusting. Right up here. There's my other brother. What are you doing up here? Jumping. You jumping from up here? Put your spot in and it squirts water. They don't have to. It's just lake water. Yeah. I was talking to Keith. Oh, it's more water. There you go. There's a lot of water. Yeah. Got plenty of water. Yeah. 
You can do that too. I don't, I don't want to go with him right he's going right there in the way. Oh, come on. It'll probably be perfectly safe. All righty. So don't forget the time we spent We're not perfect, but we have good intent and